Hello everybody, welcome back. Happy Saturday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are having a great time here. We've had a little bit of a break in between shows where we've eaten party food and had scones or scones, depending on your persuasion, um, with jam and cream. Although there is a little bit of a controversy about where you put your cream versus your jam. Um, and you, if you put butter on it, indeed, yeah. And, and, yeah, and if you eat it like a sandwich, or you eat it the way that God made scones to be eaten as two separate little um, <laughs> items. Um, yeah, I do hope you're having a lovely day. We are going to be having a first look at some fantastic ink pads um, today. We've got loads of bits and pieces to show you, and I'm not on my own. I do have the lovely Lily with me. Good morning, Lily. Good afternoon good, now. Good afternoon, Lunchtime. yeah. Blimey, well, the day's flying by. Yeah, it, it is, we're, absolutely. I have to say, we are having so much fun here at Crafters TV in between the shows and on the shows and my goodness me I am so so excited I mean I said it this morning if you joined us uh, for Play Cross right I am so excited about this show we've got our first look of these incredible duet ink pads not just these though stamps stencils blending brushes and that easy grip mark oh my goodness you're going to need to join us for this whole two hours giving you the very first look at this incredible new range I've been playing with these for a few weeks now Oh my gosh, you need these in your crafty stash. So sit back, be inspired, and make sure you set your alarm for Tuesday morning because you're going to need to get these added to your crafty stash. That is for sure. These first looks have been amazing because they do give you that little taster, that little sneaky peek about what's coming up. And as we've seen with the when they actually launch, things are going really quickly, aren't they? The, you know, people are you know, just snapping them up because you're, you're poised, you're ready for the moment that they launch with your credit card in hand, ready to and put them in your basket. And we do have some great deals for you on, on the show and over the weekend anyway. Um, anything you buy over this weekend up until midnight on Monday is going to give you double points. And if you use the code crown 20 you will be able to get 20% off selected items on the website and this is in order to sort of celebrate the coronation that we're all we're, we're all, it will all <laughs> I, I think King Charles does will take advantage of that but not today he's quite busy today he tends to craft on a Sunday um, in the afternoon so he'll be taking full advantage of that code crown 20 lots of people are messaging in to say hello and um, we've got uh, L Laurie says good morning from Arizona Wendy Meyer says hi everyone Jean-Marie Penny says hi everybody Stephen Nicole says hello everyone what are, how are you all doing on a wet Saturday afternoon it's not raining yet here oh. I'm going to use that as a caveat but it is raining down in London a lot oh. isn't it um, Wendy says yes I stayed up all night so I could see the coronation the sun will be arriving shortly and Charlotte Everett says good morning oh sorry good afternoon all my crafty lovelies from here in Hearn Bay thank you very much for joining us do remember if you've got any questions to put to Lily about how to use these new ink pads or indeed anything else do sort of let us know um, what your question is we'll try and uh, answer that I'll send some pictures of what you're getting up to today um are you having a party and we had because i spoke to ben yesterday about party food what kind of party food you like is there a particular party food that you like i'm, I'm sort of thinking of maybe people stateside or in australia do you have different party foods the party food mm. that we have over here we've had sausage rolls savory eggs mm. um quiche uh Pot pies, scones and jam, mm. pizza as well, and chicken goujons. Mm. So we're feeling quite full, yeah. um, I have to say. Lily, you haven't enjoyed your, I bought you jam tarts, jam didn't I? Because I couldn't yes. get your vegan scones. Yeah, absolutely. I am all about the sweet treats. <laughs> Anything sweet, I'm there. As long as it's vegan, I'm there. So I'm very much looking forward to having my jam tarts after this show. They're going to be my, my little treat at, at the end of this show. Oh, I'm vegan I'm, chocolate. I'm vegan chocolate. Uh -huh. Everyone knows chocolate is my favourite. Yeah. I call it sometimes my crafting fuel. When I'm crafting up a storm on an evening, I've got to have my chocolate there as sustenance. So, yes, very much looking forward to that. Yeah, but you never get chocolatey hands on, on your crafty, no, craftiness, your cards. Uh, you're, caref you're careful not um, to drop any crumbs. I'm experienced, Becky. I've got a lot of experience with this, so we're, okay. we're all good. That, I, I, it was worrying me, yeah, you, thinking about worry. you eating chocolate and getting um, chocolate on your cards, because that would be awful. Mm. That's why I don't eat chocolate biscuits mm. in my craft room. However, we mm. all know what butterfly is for, don't we? Yes. So yeah. if, there, if there's a butterfly on one of my cards, <laughs> there could be a little chocolatey uh, fingerprint <laughs> underneath, but I am very well experienced now, so we tend to be all right, but like I say, any mistakes, we always pop a butterfly over it. Exactly. That, that's always the option, isn't it? And um, so today is all about these fantastic new ink pads that we've got. So these are your duet, 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 duet. duet. 
um, ink pads. And these are um, different to the ink pads that you've seen before because they're a mixture of different types of ink in them. So you've got um, reactive and a hybrid water-based ink. Um, so you're going to be able to do more... Uh, you get sort of like a chalky finish mm. to this um, than perhaps you would do um, normally. We've got loads of different colours um, in this collection and they are shaped um, as the sh sort of shimmer ink pads were with this sort of more ergonomically correct kind of design, aren't they? Um, I'm really looking forward to what you're going to be making with these. Ooh. Shall I quickly show everyone the colours? Yeah, let's get? go through the yeah? colours. So we've got um, Spring Buds is your first one. We've got, unfortunately, uh, loads of these are edible. Well, not mm. edible, but edible, so edible names. <gasps> Raspberry Ripple. Oh, one of the best. Who doesn't like that? Oh. Rosy Apple. Mm. Um, vintage Merlot. Merlot. Sweet Clementine. Sunrise Glow. Oh, what was that? <laughs> that was the bunting falling down. Waterfall. I have to fix the bunting in a minute. This is a problem. We only have low tack tape in the studio, mm -hmm. and you need some high tack tape for something like this. Um, this is Awakening Forest. Ooh, Sailor's Wake. We also have a Lemon Meringue, Midnight Mist, and finally Soft Heather. So you can see you've got some really, really beautiful colours in there. Lily, how do the how do you use these? Well, lots and lots of ways we can use these. The fabulous thing about these, like Becky has already touched on, is they are hybrid inks. So they sort of bring together lots of the properties of some of our favourite ink pads that we already have within the spectrum of our range. Any technique you can do with a quick dry, a pigment or a water reactive ink pad, you can do with these ink pads. So it's bringing together so many different techniques. Now, Sarah has actually said you can do the most a uh, sort of vast range of techniques of any of our ink pads within our Spectrum Raw range with our Duet ink pads. So if you're looking for lots of different techniques, these are an absolutely fabulous one to go for. Now, if you're anything like me and are a little bit of a collector, shall we say, of our Spectrum Raw ink pads, then you know you're going to need to add these to your crafty, crafty stash. That is for sure. It's a no-brainer. You need to have every different type of ink pad and you know you're going to need these. However, if you've never picked up an ink pad in your life, perhaps you're new to crafting, or maybe you're into other types of crafting, perhaps you like your die cutting, uh, perhaps you like using card kits and toppers and that sort of thing, and you're thinking, do you know what? I want to go a little bit more mixed media, I want to give inking, I want to give stamping and ink pads a go, then absolutely, if you're a beginner, these are a perfect way to start because there are so many techniques you can actually do with them, which is absolutely amazing. Now you've got that fabulous easy hold ergonomic design when it comes to the shape of these. You've got your teardrop shape and that makes it so easy to work with them. Not only that, but it means you've got that wider area at the base, um, so great for wider applications of your ink. But if you wanted to get into that fine detail, you've got that real fine point at the end there of your ink pad. Great for getting into the, all those intricate areas if you need to. Now within the range, we do have 12 different colours. Becky's just showing you all the different colours, but what you get with these is a hybrid ink. So it's a hybrid water-based water reactive ink that gives you a chalky finish and you can do lots of techniques with them. I'm going to try and show you as many techniques as I can on today's show. Leanne's got so many more coming up uh, on Tuesday on launch day. Just really scratching the surface. It's one of those when you get them home, just have a play. And that's what I've so enjoyed about working with these. Just sitting down, having a play, coming up with as many different techniques as you can. But we're going to start right at basics. So we're going to start off with three different colours of ink pads. And right straight off the bat, I want to talk about the cardstocks you can use these on too. Now, I'm starting off with some multi-purpose card. We are going to be adding a little bit of water to this, but literally just a splatter of water. We don't need watercolour card for this. However, if you're going to be adding a lot of water in at a later stage, then do go for your watercolour card, but they do work onto both. So let's start off with our Sailor's Wake. This is this gorgeous blue tone. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our cardstock and we've cut it down. It's around about seven and a half by three inches. So you've got that nice sort of around a slim line DL sort of size to that. And we're going to visually just split it into three sections. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our ink pad, hold it in our hand, and because we've got that ergonomic teardrop shape it's so easy to hold and we're literally going to go straight from our ink pad onto our cardstock just swirling it around i mean look at that incredible that color is just beautiful 
working about in the top third just because we're going to be working with three different coloured ink pads um, to create this ombre, which is what we're going to do with this particular technique. I'm going to show you how to create an ombre. Uh, but of course, you don't have to use three different colours. Uh, if you're using four, then just visually split it into four, uh, two into two, and so on and so forth. We just start to lay down the colour. Now, as if I wasn't excited enough about the ink pads, oh my gosh, we have got blending brushes Ooh. each one comes in their own case and this for me this is i know it's going to sound silly but this is a sort of daft thing that uh, that pleases me you know what i'm like daft little things they come with the stickers already <laughs> to actually write on your label so you know i know this is my blue ink pad brush i'm not going to contaminate i was i'd already got my um, permanent marker ready to write on the top then i noticed you get the stickers which is That's absolutely handy. fabulous mm. it's daft but it's little things like that you can tell that it's crafters uh, that have designed this product these are amazing because the density of the bristles means that the ink will actually sit on the surface of those bristles it's not going to get sucked in what that means is it allows you to get that smooth lay down of colour, but it also makes it easier to actually wash these. All you need to do in order to wash them is literally just um, dab it on a piece of damp kitchen roll and then just dry it and that will get the colour out. Because you've not got the colour um, sort of deep into those bristles, you've just got it uh, on the very, very surface, it okay. means that they're very easy to clean. They're an absolute must have these blending brushes. We are launching them on Tuesday alongside the inks. You're getting packs of five. I have to say my top tip would definitely be if you can, treat yourself to two packs um, so you'll have 10 in total. I don't tend to have one for every single color of ink pad. I'll just have sort of like general colors. So I've got a blue one, I've got a purple one, I've got a pink one and so on and so forth. Rather than having a specific one to a, a certain blue or a certain purple or whatever, uh, I find just having one for each sort of colour will work perfect and all we're doing is we're literally just picking up some of the ink onto our brush and just blending in circular motions to start to even out this blue that we've laid down onto our cardstock so so easy to do you can see we've got that chalky finish it's not shiny and um, it's very opaque it's very chalky it gives you almost like a printed effect mm. onto your inking it looks absolutely incredible so I'm fairly pleased with that we blended that through we're going to leave that to one side for just a second our sailor's wake i'm going to pop of course my brush back in its fabulous little carry case you've got your little um clips on there as well which makes it perfect for storage now the way i tend to work when i do my ombres into groups of three i'll do the top one the bottom one and then i'll do that middle section okay a lot of people work um from the top down to the bottom but i just find it easier to do the top and the bottom and then bridge the gap with that final one in the center and literally same technique how easy is that getting your ink pad onto your car stock and just laying down that color just swirling it swirling it around I mean how easy is this you could never have crafted before in your life you can definitely take an ink pad and swirl it onto your cardstock to lay down that color it could not be simpler to work with these ink pads so again in that uh, in this case the bottom third we just start to blend through that color and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blending brush of course this one's my pink one <laughs> Lovely and organised. It's the daft little things, Becky. Organisation, that sort of thing, pleases me There's greatly. There's a lot of pleasure that comes from organising a craft room, not just Absolutely. crafting in it, isn't there, but organising your pens. I know you have your pens all in order. I certainly do, mm -hmm. yeah. I have uh, my fabulous universal carry bags. I have um, one for my classiques, one for my illustrators, and then I've got the little tri-blend 48 carry cases, one for my tri-blend brush, one for my <laughs> regular tri-blend. You might uh, pick up, I'm a little bit of a, of a pen addict, bit of a colouring addict, uh, but colouring is definitely my thing. And getting inky, getting out all these, um, all these inks, all your stencils, all your stamps, so much fun. You're gonna have so much fun when you get these home, that is for sure. Sure. So that's our bottom section using our Raspberry Ripple. Oh, that name just makes me hungry, I have to say. Raspberry Ripple ice cream. Mm. Ooh, it feels definitely like the sort of thing you'd have on a coronation day on a... Um, I think so too. On a garden party. Oh, yeah. Possibly and not a garden party today with the rain, but, whoa. you know... 
Yeah, I have to say I went out this morning running about seven o'clock and there was a little bit of rain, um, but just drizzle. But I think we forecast for quite a lot over the weekend, which mm. of course, like we were saying last weekend, yep. um, is no um, sort of surprise because it is a bank holiday. Yeah, exactly. That's and what happens. Anybody who uh, lives in Britain knows if it's a bank holiday, it's going to be horrendous weather because, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just the way it works. Do you know, my husband said to me, um, oh, are you around this weekend? I said, no, no, I'm at work. And he went, oh, well, I thought we'd have a barbecue. And oh. I was like, it's bank holiday weekend. The weather will be <laughs> atrocious. And he said, it's always nice weather on the bank holiday. Where is he daft? I Has he ever lived in this country? I don't know. I don't know what he's... I, I, I think he'd been at the gin when he said that to Quite me. Because clearly. there's no way that could happen. No. It's always bad weather. That, unless it's a bank holiday when I'm not here, when I'm, I've gone away somewhere nice and then it's really good weather here and appalling weather wherever I Absolutely. happen to be. Yes. That looks lovely. It does blend really well, doesn't, doesn't it? It blend beautifully. And using these brushes, it gives you that gorgeous, uh, smooth blend of colour. Very easy to do. I mean, you could be a beginner, you could be advanced. It doesn't matter whatsoever. You're going to get those fabulous results every single time. Now, that's how we create an ombre. Nice and easy to do that, as you've just seen, using your blending brushes, using your ink pads. Just three colours gives you that lovely lay down of colour. Now that could be our card in itself. That would be a really nice, simple card just with a sentiment onto there. Uh, and you would have a lovely finished card. Uh, not a lot you need to do with that. Just keep it nice and clean and simple. Give you that really stylish look. However, we talked earlier about how these are water reactive ink pads with that chalky finish. And we're gonna have a little play with that now. So all I've got is I've got some water ordinary water from the tap just literally going to get a little bit on my fingers I'm just going to splat it like so onto my cardstock now I could be using one of my fine spray misters the yeah. only reason that I'm not is because I want larger droplets of water if you use your mister it gives you slightly smaller water droplets and I want quite large uh, droplets on here just to make a focus of that this that's lovely just Doesn't it look as cool? it is, yeah. Straight away, can you see that? It's not that faux bleaching effect like you get with your water reactives. You get that faux bleached effect. With this, you get that chalky finish, and within an instant, you can see that starting to give that chalky finish. As well, another great thing about this technique, if you are brand new to your uh, blending and you're a little bit worried about getting that smooth blend, if you've got a little bit of unevenness, and can you see down the bottom, Add a little bit of a messy fingerprint. You know, I got a little bit carried away and my fingers were getting in the way, they were inky. Don't matter. When we add our water in, it disguises a multitude of sins, quite frankly. And you get that beautiful finish, even if your inking was slightly uneven, even if you've got a few uh, inky fingerprints on there, you have that fabulous result. Now that will sort of evolve and it will continue to um, get more chalky, uh, get more sort of oxidized as it goes. If you want to stop in or inhibit that, all you need to do is set it with your heat tool. Or what I tend to do is I just take a piece of kitchen roll, paper towel, anything like that, and just dab it off. And that will sort of dry that off and stop that, that oxidation uh, from keeping on happening. And that is as easy as it is to create a background. All we're going to do is going to start to lay that up into a very, very simple card. So a piece of black card, and I'm going to say it now, I think every single demo that I'm going to be doing on this show, black card is going to be featuring. Okay. So if you've not got yours, get yourself over to the website. When you're creating your inky backgrounds um, with your bright colours like we're going to be doing today, and when you're creating quite clean and simple cards, black mats and layers makes those um, real bright colours pop. And I know it sounds a little bit daft by adding in black, it makes the um, bright colours actually look even brighter, which is brilliant. So just a tiny little quarter of an inch. I always want to say seam allowance, and I think with you stood there, <laughs> Becky, it's not helping. But a quarter of an inch mat, mat and layer, doesn't that just make it pop? You can see, I'll bring you one that I've done, uh, done earlier. So that's... You know, same sort of technique, mm -hmm. same with the water droplets, just ever so slightly different, uh, slightly less intense in terms of the colours, but doesn't it look fabulous? Every single time you get brilliant finished results uh, with these ink pads, and you can see that chalky finish, doesn't it look absolutely fab? If you were to use something like uh, a water reactive, it would be slightly, I don't want to say shiny, because it wouldn't be like shiny, shiny, but it would be not so matte, mm -hmm. uh, not so flat in terms of the colour. So, of course, if you do already have your water reactive ink pads, these are going to give you a totally 
different result. And I'm never going to say that these are going to replace another ink pad because I do always say you need everything because everything has um, sort of different qualities, different benefits, different techniques you can use them for. It's the same as when we were talking earlier about our tri blends, our uh, brush versus our mm -hmm. bullet nibs. Everything's got a different use, everything's got different advantages and this is just going to give you an, yet another effect when you come to your inking. Now to finish that off, we've taken some of the stamps that you actually get uh, within the collection. So alongside our fabulous um, inks, I couldn't think of the word then, inks, you're also getting four sets of stamps and four sets of stencils. Ooh, this is a, Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. You know I love a butterfly and this is fabulous. In each set, and we'll look at these in a little bit more detail as we move throughout the show, you get a big focal stamp, you get sentiments, and what I love about these is the those fabulous mix and match sentiments so you can build your own sayings and then you get textures as well which is absolutely incredible to get all of those included. And we've just stamped the With Love uh, just onto some multi-purpose card. Uh, an absolute crafty essential is your multi-purpose card. Um, I always have to have plenty of packs in reserve because I get through an awful lot. You can imagine with the amount of crafting I do, uh, <laughs> quite how much multi-purpose card I get through. Uh, it's what I use to create all of my card bases, unless I'm using Centura Pearl, of course, but whenever I'm using white card, it is always going to be my multi-purpose, unless it's uh, for something specialised like your Nina or your watercolour card. And all we're going to do is we're going to layer these onto our card. So let's bring in some foam pads just for that little bit of dimension onto our sentiment. So one onto there, and I think we'll have that on the base around there. I'm just going to pop another uh, foam pad onto the back. So you will, of course, find your foam pads on the website. Again, another of my crafty must-haves. Uh, they give you that lovely dimension onto your cards. Uh, it makes things that a little bit more 3D uh, when you're layering up your cards. And then we'll pop one onto the width. That's not stuck very well. There we go. And then we're going to pop that onto the top like that. However, to finish it off, we're going to bring in some more of those stamps. So we've used our stamps for our sentiment. However, let's leave that to one side for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a look at that gorgeous uh, butterfly stamp that we had within the collection. So if we open this up, you can see you get that lovely full panel onto there. And all we've gone ahead and done, you can see mine is a little bit well loved already. <laughs> uh, I've not had it for long, but I've definitely uh, got good use for it. You know I do love uh, stamping my butterflies. And I've taken a bit of watercolour card this time rather than multi-purpose. And I've just stamped one of them out. I'm not worrying about anything around the edge, so we are going to fussy cut this out. But I've just stamped the one from that particular uh, large stamp. I'm going to bring in uh, some kitchen towel. I'm going to bring back in my cup of water. I'm going to use a paintbrush. Now, you can use a water brush if you prefer. I have to say, I find it a lot easier to paint with a... Um, with an actual paintbrush and water than with a water brush, just because I find you get a little bit more control, but whatever you find easiest. We're taking Sailor's Wake, just gonna dab a little bit onto our um, glass mat. It could be a non-stick -stick craft sheet, it could be easy grip mat, anything that's non-porous. Dab that onto there, a little bit of water on our paintbrush, and we're gonna pick up some of that ink, and we're gonna use our ink as a paint. Now I'm using my watercolour card just because we're adding a lot more water uh, than we did for the background. Because for the background we're just splattering a few dots of water onto there. We didn't need to use watercolour card. But because we're laying down a fair bit of water onto uh, this piece here, I definitely recommend your watercolour card. And all we're going to do is just going to go all over that part of the image, all over our butterfly uh, with a fairly watery layer of our ink. And then in order to start to build up that dimension, hmm. we're going to add a little bit more of our, um, our ink onto there. So the more ink and less water you've got when you're painting, it's going to be a little bit more uh, intense and dark in terms of your colour. So we're going to build up that colour, build up that intensity a little bit more in the centre, around the body, and then we're going to have the edges of the wings uh, that a little bit lighter to give us that depth and dimension. If you want to get an even more ten intense uh, colour onto there, just dry off that first layer and then when it's dry, go back in with that second layer of colour and that's going to give you uh, an even more intense uh, depth of colour onto there. 
How easy is it though to watercolour with your ink pads? So not only are we using them to create backgrounds, we're actually painting with them, which is fabulous. Then all we're going to do is we're just going to take our pair of scissors. If you find it easier to use a smaller pair of scissors, then by all means go for that. I have to say, I was always one for using my little snippy scissors, but I've been using my medium pair of scissors a lot more often um, for actually doing my fussy cutting. Yeah. But whatever works for you um, is going to be absolutely perfect to fussy cut around the edge. So just following that outside line of the stamp, moving, um, couple of mils around the outside that slight whiteboard is going to give you that really professional um, look to your stamping and to your cutting out nice and easy to follow when you've got that crisp stamp lined all around the outside and we actually stamped using our um, black waterproofing pad now because we were using water to watercolor with definitely going to need to go for your waterproof ink pad uh, on your type of stamping. We're just going around the edge and that gives us our butterfly. Very easy to create your own embellishments using the stamps and the inks that you're getting. And then finally, I've done the same just with another of the butterflies, but I've colored that one in using the Raspberry Ripple. And then that's just gonna be our finishing touch to our card. Let's add a little bit of shape into the wings. So we're just gonna shape them upwards to make them look a little bit more dimensional. And then I think we'll have our pink one up the top like so. Yeah. So let's bring in uh, one of our foam pads, one across the body, just to make sure we've got that little bit of dimension. I'm not adding any adhesive onto the wings just so that they can fly free uh, a little bit more and give us that dimension. Let's pop one up the top like so. And then the other one, I'm gonna place that along the bottom just for a little bit of um, balance pop that onto the bottom and what a super super simple card but showing you a couple of ways that you can use these ink pads you can do your ombre effects you can do your uh, oxidized effects with your water and of course you can also paint with them how super super clean and simple but wow how fabulous are those ink pads that is lovely and i love all those different techniques being able to paint with them as well mm -hmm. you know that is it's a nice finish to that oh so much love for all of these loads and loads of um, people messaging in um eleanor says that's a pretty color on the butterfly um i i think i might susan griffith says i think i might use some of the clear overlay sparkle pen with for the ombre effect just Ooh. a tiny bit of fling funny you should mention that because i've got those here and i'm going to talk about those in just a moment um anna says once you've set it with a heat gun can you go back and affect it again with water or is it set forever absolutely yeah you can keep, you keep, doing keep it. going back in yeah that's a beautiful thing i love that about ink pads and things like that I always say, if you're not sure on a card or a background you've done, just take a step away for a second and then come back to it. And if you come back to it and you think it needs a little bit more work, go back in and rework it. There really is no right or wrong. And a saying that I absolutely love by another, another crafter always says this, is you're only one layer away from perfection. <laughs> so if you're not happy, just keep going. Yeah. So often we get asked, well, when do you know when to stop? When do you know when you finish? I always say, if you're not happy with it, you're not finished. Keep going until you're happy. Once you're happy, that's enough. That sounds like a good idea. Lots of people saying they like these. Laurie says, oh, yes, these inks, you will need them. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor says, cannot wait till Tuesday for these to be available. Lynn says, really excited about these new ink pads and those brushes. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people liking the brushes. Laura says she likes the brushes. Laurie's going to order the brushes. Go ahead and put three sets aside for me. I wish we could. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you're going to have to get up early on Tuesday. Make sure you get a chance to look at that. Um, I did ask what people were doing today. Um, um, Laura Gray says, good morning everyone, I missed Play Your Crafts right earlier, I opted, I opted for the historic coronation of King Charles and Queen Camilla, God save the King. Um, Rhonda says, hello Lily and Becky, CTV crews, Team Social and all my wonderful crafty friends chatting and crafting today from a cloudy but warmish Oak Park. Um, what was the other one that I was going to say? Oh, Susan Griffith says, no party, no TV. I had a lovely walk on the beach all morning, watching the ships go up and down the Thames and collecting oyster shells. Now to start with my pl plaid paper pads. I always find that difficult to say. I hope you had a nice time. I hope the weather was, was kind to you and it wasn't too wet and rainy. Um, 
lots of people liking those. I'm, I'm really pleased to see something a little bit different um, that we're having and use them in a, a different kind of way. Um, that's a, an, a nice idea. And the colours are just beautiful. There's so many different options in there. As uh, I can't remember who it was saying about the sparkle pens, Susan um, said about using some of the sparkle pens. We do have them on the show today. And there are two sets of three. These are your clear sparkle pens um, here. So you, this is actually a really good price, £20 or or £20.99 or $27.99. Platinum price is £16.79 or $22.39. And these are great for just adding that little bit extra bit of sparkle, aren't they, Lily? Absolutely. And when we talk about lifting the colour up, so with that last background, we lifted the colour up using water. You can do a similar sort of technique with your clear sparkle pens, but not only is it going to give that oxidised uh, effect and lift that colour away, it's also going to add that sparkle back in. So it's going to give you a truly magical look we will try and have a, a little play with that technique later uh, on today's show. It is fabulous. I mean, adding water is great, but if we can add water and sparkle, I mean, it don't get much better than adding much sparkle, does it? When you've got intense colours, when you've got sparkle, wow, it's going to look absolutely fabulous. Those are definitely uh, an essential. You can do lots with your sparkle pens. I, I love it. I love a bit of sparkle. Oh, gosh, Any opportunity yeah. for a bit of sparkle. Um, I was also asking what people, um, what party food do you have? Um, yeah, I particularly like a volivant. To be honest, I like a volivant. I'll be honest, um, I don't think I've ever had one. You've never had oh, no, I don't know how I'm to not do that fancy. I don't know how to do a vegan volivant. What exactly? Because it's puff they? pastry <gasps> oh. to make like a little case filled with my mum used to put chicken and white sauce in the middle. Oh, you could easily use a vegan chicken. Yeah, how, how do you can you do a puff pastry? Yeah, yeah, pastry? yeah. Yeah, you can buy it shop bought. Oh, okay. Be, yeah. Oh, it's easy. Mm. Yeah. Mm, so, I quite like the sound. I do like pastry. Oh, I do like a volivant. Well, mm. uh, um Linda. No, I've lost that. It's moved now. No. Where did it say? Oh, gosh. You like me with the iPad. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I can't remember who said it now. Someone said they made make a cheese ball, but I don't know what a cheese ball is. Oh, it's Lynn. Sorry, Lynn. Hello from Indiana. I'm known for my cheese ball, so that's what I take. Mm. What's a cheese ball? Can we have a look? Is it, is it like a... A big mixture of cheese all bundled up, and you just got to scoop it out. Or I thought they were, they were those crisps cheese balls. Weirdly, I've got some back of the house, like yeah. little round yeah, cheesy balls. Like orange. Yeah. I like those. Yeah, mm, I, eat them with my, um, I eat them with my chopsticks, so my hands oh. don't get mucky. There you go. Maybe yeah. I need to do that with my chocolate. Mm. I'd look a bit bit daft with a bar of chocolate and chopsticks. Well, Not... I don't know. Chocolate buttons and chopsticks. Oh would yeah, work really well. Um, mm. But Lillian has sent us a picture of what she takes to a party. Oh. Wow! That is incredible. That's impressive. That's a cheese and charcuterie <gasps> board. Ooh, Ow. That is great. I love that. Wow. Yeah, char char alter I can't even say that. Charcuterie wow. board. That brilliant. is brilliant. Oh, I love that. Do you Gosh. take that to every party? <gasps> Lillian, you are in London. Can you come to my party and bring that? Wow. I think, Lillian, I think Lillian's yeah. in London. I think she might be. Yeah, I think she is. That is brilliant. Send us some pictures of what you make. Because obviously yeah. in different, different parts of the world, you take different things to parties, mm. don't you? Um, mm. Yeah, I always quite like the idea of seeing what other people bring to a party. Yeah, I mean, one of my favourite things, because I love me baking, one of my favourite things to bake is brownies. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, I love doing different flavours of brownies. La last week I did hazelnut brownies. You did what? Hazelnut brownies. Oh, nice. They were very, very nice, like hazelnut praline. But yeah, I usually I bring a big batch of brownies. N not to me, yeah. you don't. No, oh yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, so our birthday's week. next week. No, no, obviously mm. not that important until Lily presents you with a brownie and yeah. you're like, oh, thank you. Um, it's I mean, like being crowned. It's about, about the same sort of. I'm in know, next prestige. week. Just mm. saying. You're in next week. I am. Uh, when am I brownie. not in? Becky, let's be honest, when am I not in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you live here. The, the, underneath that counter over there is a, a little sleeping bag and Lily mm. just stays there. She crafts until you know it gets really dark and then she just goes there and has a little sleep and gets back up and crafts again. Absolutely, yeah. Eat, yeah. sleep, craft, repeat. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> um, so you're going to show us some more techniques with these um, ink pads? Absolutely, let's do it, honestly. I have had so much fun playing with these. So many techniques you can do. And like I said, really just scratching the surface. And I hope I'm sort of whetting your crafty appetite as to the sorts of things you guys are going to be creating at home. Now, we're going to be bringing in some of the stencils for this particular demo. You are getting four different uh, sets within the collection, but they are trios. So you're getting three different stencils within each set and we're going with a stylish trio for this particular technique 
what you want is you, you want a stencil that's quite open. You don't want anything that's too fussy or that's got really small spaces. You want something that's got quite large spaces and this is going to be absolutely ideal. So we've cut a piece of, and this time we're working with watercolour card, just because it's going to add quite a lot of water. Again, it's sort of experimenting, it's finding out and sort of having a think about, do you need watercolour card? Are you going to be adding a lot of water? If you're not, just go for your multi-purpose. But if you are kind of not soaking it, but adding a fair amount of water, definitely do use your watercolour card. We've cut this down to six inches by two inches. Uh, but we're actually going to cut this down into panels a little bit later on, but I find it easiest to work with this larger piece and then we'll cut it down afterwards. Now, we're going to go again with three different ink pad colours. We're going to go with our rosy apple, our sque sweet, oh, squeaky clementine, that's a new one, <laughs> our sweet clementine, sweet clementine and our sunrise glow. Let's start off with our rosy apple. Now, for this particular technique, we're not worried about getting that smooth blend. We're actually going to go on a diagonal. And now what you'll notice with using our watercolour card, watercolour card has a texture to it and that's a, uh, what is, is sort of enables it to take that water mm -hmm. um, a little bit better than a smoother cardstock. But you will see that texture when you first lay down your colour. So you will need to sort of add a little bit more colour. If you want to disguise uh, that tooth, that texture to the card, you will need to add a little bit of more colour. Uh, but of course, if you don't want to, if you want to sort of make a feature of that texture, then by all means uh, do that and it'll just give you a different effect. So we're working on a diagonal, we're going in sort of stripes. We're not worried about them being perfectly blended into each other. We're just wanting to lay down that colour and you want to go for fairly uh, bright or, or sort of intense colours for this just because it will work a little bit better uh, for the technique that we're about to do. So going in with that next colour, can see it started to give us a really quite a funky effect. It's not always just about having that smooth blend, that blend transition with your ombres. Think of different techniques that you can do of having the colours uh, almost in like patterns, if you like, literally just by using your ink pads, not even bringing in any stencils at this stage, just using the ink pads themselves, working directly from the ink pad onto our cardstock. And when you're happy that you've laid down enough colour, all we're going to do is we're going to bring in, of course, one of our fabulous branding brushes. Oh, I wonder what colour this one is. Of course, we've got our label on there, <laughs> our orange. Honestly, these are brilliant. And I have to say, they are so super, super smooth and soft. They are beautiful. Can I just say, when you first get yours home, before you use it with any ink, just on the back of your hand, just give it a little stroke. Oh. It's really nice. So, so soft. I've got a few questions about the brushes. Oh, actually. yes, please. Um, get them across. the girl says, can you use the brushes on other ink pads in the same colour families? And Benita asked the same question, actually. Oh, so, for example, could I use the same one on Sunrise Glow and Sweet Clementine? No, I think if oh. you can use them on um, other ink pads, uh, other types of ink pads. Absolutely, yes. However, what I would say is, if you're going to do that, I would have, like, or one for your orange duet, one for your orange water reactive. I wouldn't use the same, I wouldn't cross contaminate between mediums, so right. I wouldn't use a water reactive one with a duet one. Um, but absolutely, you can use these with any, any type of ink pad that you've got for so sure. You could use those instead of your um, blending, tools. blending tools. Yeah, I know some people find they prefer to use their brushes in general. I tend to prefer my blending tools, but with my duets, I find the blending brushes work mm -hmm. a lot better. So I'll be continuing personally to use my blending tools with all my other ink pads, but for my duets, I will always be using uh, my blending brushes. I just find they work a lot better. Okay. Yeah, any other questions, do please get them across. We'd love to hear uh, all your questions and we'll do our very best to answer them. Of course, it's so exciting to get a brand new product, so I know a lot of you guys will have lots of questions, uh, lots of ideas perhaps as well. If you've got ideas, you're thinking, mm, I wonder if that would work, or oh, I can't wait to try such and such when I get these home, absolutely, let us know. Lots of excitement about these ink pads. I know uh, when Leanne gave us a little sneaky peek uh, the other week, I know a lot of you guys at home were super, super excited, and rightly so. I mean, it's exciting to get new ink pad colours, but brand new types of ink pads is absolutely incredible. Definitely. I do like that kind of chalky finish. Oh, isn't it lovely? Mm. It's just think a little bit different, isn't it? You know, we're used to having a slightly more shiny uh, effect to our ink pads, but by having that chalky finish, it's just that little bit of something different. And I think, especially when you've been crafting for a number of years, I mean, like, 
myself in it and you, Becca, we've both been crafting for a few years now. It's just having something different. Uh, when you've got a lot in your crafty stash, it's always exciting to have something that that's a little, is that little bit different. I think it sort of uh, reinvigorates your crafting. I think we need that think, sometimes. Right. Yeah, we can get stuck in a rut. We can be end up doing the same things over and over again, or using the same sorts of products. Uh, but by just having something like this, I think it's really going to uh, breathe, breathe a little bit of fresh air, breathe a little bit of life into your crafting. Now, how cool does that look? By using it on the diagonal, it gives you almost a little bit like a tiger stripe onto mm -hmm. that. Really cool background. However, let's bring in these stencils. So, using that stylish trio this particular one we're going to be using like i say you want something that's got uh, a little bit more open space to it it does work best with this sort of technique now this is a good I'd say a little bit of a bone of contention perhaps about sticking your stencils down now quite often if i want a really precise design absolutely use your stick and spray on the back of there however for this we want more of a mixed medium more of a an abstract not so perfect you know we want, don't want those crisp lines on it that's the sort of look we're going for for this. So I'm not going to tape it down. I'm not going to um, use my stick and spray. If it moves a little bit, if it's not that perfect clean line, then it's going to add to that effect. So I'm not worrying about that at all. Position that over the top, then grab your fine spray misters. Then all we're going to do, literally just water in this bottle. We're just going to spritz over our piece. So the piece that we're in, and this is why you want quite a lot of color laid down onto your background, uh, just so that it's gonna give you um, more of sort of a contrast when we add our water on. Now we're gonna leave that to dry uh, for just a moment with your uh, stencil in place. While that's uh, sort of drying a little bit, we're gonna bring in our card base and just start to layer that up. So we've got a nice sort of, it's not exactly slim line, but it's that sort of shape card mm -hmm. base. And we've got a black matting layer and then a white one. I did say I'd be using a lot of my black cardstock. And I, I wasn't joking. It is literally on every single demo that I've prepped for this show. It does work absolutely perfectly. So bringing in our tape runner, we're going to mat and layer our white onto our um, black card. You can see that's already starting to sort of move and change. It's exciting to see see that transformation, to see that ink uh, start to move and alter and those colours all starting to merge and you get all that amazing uh, reactive effect that sort of transforms over time. Then we're just going to mat and layer our black cardstock onto our card base. Nice and simple to do. You could use uh, foam pads for that if you wanted a little bit of lift but for this particular instance we're just going to stick that flat onto our card base like so. Now we'll leave that to one side and we'll have a look at this. So let's remove our stencil. You could of course be using that excess on the back if you want um, to create another background. It's going to dry off our stencil. Can you see it's starting where we had our stencil? Yeah. That's sort of lifted the colour away. You're getting that oxidation on that particular area and the places where you didn't have your stencil, it's a little bit darker. And as oh, yeah. that dries, yeah that's going to intensify even more and that effect is going to be um, sort of more pronounced. So if we bring in one that we've already done, leave that to dry, might have a little look at that a little bit later to see how it's getting on. You can see that technique, look how much more intense that oh, gets yes. as it fully dries. If you want to speed it up, you can use a heat tool, but the only thing I'd be cautious of is obviously you can see we've got droplets onto there. I don't really want to move those. If you were to use a heat tool, you would move those. So I tend to leave that to dry naturally if you can. But leaving it to dry, this is the sort of effect you're going to get. And all I've done is I've just chopped it into three. I find it a little bit easier to start off with that larger panel and then chop it down. Just because these are quite small pieces to be working with, it could be a little bit fiddly. So work with that larger piece. It was six inches by two inches. And then you just chop it down ooh, into three. And then that'll give you three uh, two inches by two inches sort of tiles um, for your uh, little backgrounds. But it, how cool does that look? Just spritzing through our stencil. It's almost like using the negative because uh, we tend to ink through our stencils. So we'll get that positive design. 
but by spritzing through you get almost like that negative effect. I Is think it best to so leave cool. the stencil on there until it dries completely? Uh, I tend to, I yeah. find it's best. Um, obviously we've removed that one from there and that's not an issue, but you'll just find you get more of a diffused effect if you remove the stencil. If you leave it in position, uh, you will get a slightly more um, sort of defined effect. So for this particular background here, the one that's dried, uh, I left the stencil in position until uh, it was actually dry and then I removed it. So we're matting these onto, again, black cardstock, uh, just cut to quarter of an inch larger, so two and a quarter inch squares. Of course, if you've got your square nesting dies, uh, then this would be absolutely perfect. If you've got those six by six, six inch uh, matting and layering dies, those would be great uh, for any sort of effect like this. But lining these up like so. And then we're going to stick these onto our card base. Now I'm debating whether I want it portrait or landscape. Ooh, choices, choices, eh? Do you know, we've just done a portrait one, so shall we go for landscape? Just yeah, to mix it up not? a little bit. Why not? Just because we can. And then for a little bit of lift, that little bit of dimension, let's use some of our foam pads. Could be using your foam tape, but not another sort of, uh, of uh, 3D adhesive, of course, <laughs> <laughs> with another name, maybe. Definitely got to be foam pads or foam tape. Oh, don't worry, Lily, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make you sing. Oh, gosh. Is that, that the, is that the stuff of nightmares? That um, been, I imagine it is for Ben now. It just gets stuck in my head so terribly, I feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, like crazy but, fog all over again. Oh, gosh, yeah, I do remember that. Blimey, that was some years ago now, wasn't it? But yeah, that, that was my favourite advert at Christmas. I made mm -hmm. everyone watch it. Um, they had, um, there was a couple, I think it was a national lottery, a couple that meet on the train and he has the crazy frog, frog in his wing oh, Gosh, yes, I remember and that. And then, um, you know, they, they miss each other and then she's trying to find him again. And it's only the ringtone that mm -hmm. sort of draws her to him. Um, but yeah, it made me, made, made me reminisce about the crazy frog. Yeah. Uh, everyone... And now that'll be stuck in everyone's head today. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Um, you know, you'll always think of me when you think of the crazy frog. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was um, very popular back in the day, wasn't it? So what I find when you're lining up tiles like this, I find it easier to stick your outer two first and then your centre one. I tend to stick that last. Then you can line it up. If you know the two uh, outer ones are straight and even, then you know how much space you've got left for that middle tile. So lining those up so they're nice and straight and then finally we're going to stick that centre one into the middle. I can see out the corner of the, my eye actually, my background, it's starting to come along nicely actually. Uh, I will show you, once we finish this card, I'll show you how that's getting along. But it's so much fun to see things sort of transform over time. So just to finish that off, um, I did use some of these earlier, but this is from the uh, Nature's Garden Farmhouse collection. You will find these uh, on the Shop the Day page. It's part of a bundle. You're getting a few other items from that collection. Amazing saving uh, on those. And it's just a dear friend. I think that's really sweet uh, to add on to there. So we're just going to pop some of our tacky glue on the back. And it's just that finishing touch. You could, of course, use some of the stamps that you're getting as part of the collection. Uh, but just to use some of that fabulous uh, collection of our 3D toppers, we're just going to pop that, I think, onto the bottom right. Should we pop it down there? I think, yeah, choices, choices. Let's go around about there and that will finish that off beautifully. So that is our finished card. I'll show you the background in just a second. It's looking super, super cool, but how simple. I mean, it's, these are all about simple cards. I'm not doing fancy cards. I'm not doing concept cards in this show. This is all about the backgrounds. It's all about the techniques, but showing you how you can pop them into cards very quickly and easily. But let's just have a quick, quick little look can we see how this is starting to transform? Look oh, at yes, that. Yeah. Just in a few minutes, what doesn't that look? great technique. It looks so, so fun, doesn't it? Mm. But just creating your own background by laying down your colour, using those ink pads, popping your stencil over the top and spritzing through. Love these ink pads. You're going to have to have these on Tuesday. I think it's a little bit of a no-brainer, I'm afraid. You've got to have them. They're absolutely lovely. Really like those techniques. And I look mm. particularly like those little sort of tiles effect that you've done in there. That looks a really mm. nice, clean card. I do like that. Yeah, great for masculine mates as well, or teenagers. Yeah, Perfect. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, we're going to go for a short break. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of moments. Welcome to Club Inspire the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. 
Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. A few weeks ago on a show, we were talking about places where all you guys lived. Well, we might have used Google Earth just to have a bit of a sneaky look at the village, town, or city that you lived in. And I thought it might be quite funny if I wrote a little ditty and I put on my Facebook page, where do y'all live, and all 50 towns and cities and village into my little song. But I didn't realize that there would be about 425 responses, so I'm going to cram as many places into this song as I can, but I won't get them all in. We craft everywhere, man. We craft everywhere. From over here to there, man. We craft everywhere. In crafters, we've got our share, man. We craft everywhere. We craft in Lydney, Limbrook, Launceston, Lehanna, Tampa, Darlington, Armour Beach, Sedalia, Wills Point, Witness, Wildwood, Wild Amos, Chautauqua Lake, Walker Burn, Yate, Bear, Hesperia, Sublimity, Pinho, Avon, Freeport, Mableton, San Jose, Adam Club, Great Bend, Detroit, Peniston. We craft everywhere, man. We craft everywhere. From over here to there, man. We craft everywhere. In crafters, we've got our share, man. We craft everywhere. Crafting Parachute, Paradise, Pilots, Pope, Apelion, Sheeps at Basin, Petersburg, Seacom, Sutton, Saturn, Bristol, Brighton, Brooklyn, Blackwell, Barnsley, Tide Street, South Shields, Tampa Hills, and Bentley, Tampa Villa, Tucum, Cary, Ottawa, Hull, Harrisburg, Lexington, Tupelo, Cincinnati, Austinburg. We craft everywhere, man. We craft everywhere. From over here to there, man. We craft everywhere. In crafters, we've got our share, man. We craft everywhere. Grabbing Luxahatchee, Lakesville, Lawrence, Lacey, Livermore, Albuquerque, Wiki, Washi, Pentecostal, Elsmore Park, Mechanicsburg, Williamsburg, Rebello, Houston, Burlington, Wet Wang, Market Creek, Yelm, Effort, Wellington, Wapaka, Nita, Homer, Sassa, Santa Rosa, Wichita, Honolulu, Riverdale, Melbourne, Comer, Spinta, now we craft everywhere, man, we craft everywhere, from over here to there, man, we craft everywhere, in crafters we've got our share, man, we craft everywhere. Grabbing Newton Abbott, Newton Abbey, Richmond, Dudley, Georgetown, East Kilbride, Eugene, Farron, Bramwick, Walkerstown, Newaheim, Fort Wayne, Gloucester, Chester, Long Beach, and Raphael, St. Dominic, St. Cloud, St. Augustine Beach, Sand Springs, Romford, Tulsa, Traverse City, Wesley Chapel, Ballarat, Medina, Rampo City. We craft everywhere, man. We craft everywhere. From over here to there, man. We craft everywhere. In crafters, we've got our share, man. We craft everywhere. Grafton, Sarbrook, and Tucson, Kashami, Philadelphia, Chicago, Las Vegas, Biloxi, Lafayette, Elmira, Glendale, Scottsdale, Anchorage, and Hurtville, Seattle, Gold Canyon, Ipswich, Cumberland, Union, Bill, Toledo, Miami, Atlanta, Cleveland, Gold Canyon, Altoona, Kaloon, Duckport, Orange Club, or Rising Sun. We craft everywhere, man. We craft everywhere. From over here to there, man. We craft everywhere. In crafters, we've got our share, man. We craft everywhere. And there's a few more places I didn't manage to get into the song. West Runton, Newcastle, Kingswood, Sandbach, Carlisle, Butley, Albury, Durham, Springfield, Ashington. We craft in Greenville, Lincoln, Nebraska, Sumter, Oak Park, Winchester, Nap Hill, Stoke on Trent, Mount Pocono, Greenville, Charlotte, Oxon Hill, Tunbridge Wells, Modesto, Haverhill, Sierra Vista, Arathebo, Morgantown, O'Fallon, Aurora, Black Forest. We craft in Hermiston, Brownsburg, Henderson, Sakara, Fort Myers, Madden, Home, Hilliard, Farmingdale, East Moline, Summers Point, Calgary, Charleston, Sawston, Malden, Galloway, Fitchburg, Hope. Oakland, Aberdeen, Winstead, Castlewood, Chatsworth, Limestone, Victoria, Willoughby, Rockland, Canton, Falmouth, Canistota, Lindahurst, Ashbourne, and Cluj, Napoca. Oh yeah. I wasn't, I, I did think about continuing to dance, but now there's no music. Ah, oh, everyone loves a bit of Ben, don't they? Yeah. Ben, we need a new song. It's been at least we a do. couple of weeks since we last heard you sing. We need another one. Everyone loves that song. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you, actually. Ooh. Um, my fibre
Broad Disney Journey um, says, Hello. hey, I may have missed this, but can we ask Lily, is there a way to store the ink pads um, as they don't seem to be massively juicy, massively be wet, um, to lay down, it seems, you no, know, when you're laying down colour, can you, can you store them upside down? Do you want to store them upside down? I, I always store them the right way up. So right. I use our uh, ink pad storage trays. And now this is one of the questions when we first brought out our shimmer ink pads. Of course, they're slightly different shape to our traditional uh, oval ink pads, but these will still fit in your ink pad storage trays. I'd say get yourself some of those, uh, store them. I always store them that way up so you've got the writing facing up. But what I would say is make sure uh, you never store them in direct sunlight mm -hmm. or next to a radiator. Um, yeah. So not in a hot place or not in a sunny place. I actually have mine in, in like a, a shaded corner of the room. Um, so they are nice and cool uh, and nice and shaded. Don't put them in the fridge, Nicola, because um, you, you might go in one evening, uh, you know, middle of the night, midnight munches, and you, you're like, what's this? Oh, I'm not eating that, you know. Don't throw them in the fridge for sure. Funny uh, chalky face, chalky taste in your mouth. Oof, yeah, I can't imagine the taste. Of it. I mean, raspberry ripple sounds great, but I can't yeah. imagine it tastes like that. No. Um, but do get your ink pad storage trays. You'll find those on the website. Store them um, the right way up. You should be absolutely fine. Fantastic. And what you do find with those kind of chalky ink pads, they mm. are, um, they've got a different kind of feel to them because they are chal chalky, which in effect is quite, no, not dry, mm. but it's not super wet and sloppy, is it? Absolutely. I mean, you'll find that if you've used any of our other ink pads before, you'll find the quick dry, I think they are so, so juicy. Water reactive, not as much. And mm -hmm. then your, your opaque pigment, totally different. Just it's the type of ink pad. It's funny, me and Debbie Robinson were talking about this yesterday, actually. The type of um, sort of surface material that that ink pad is made from, it's different for all of them. So you're but... going to get a different sort of level of juiciness, shall we say, mm -hmm. with all your different ink pads. But I must say, these are actually my own personal ink pads from home so these are the ones that I've been using and abusing shall we say over the past few weeks these are not a box set fresh uh, that we've got here in the studio for the day I had to lug these in the two miles in I walked in with all my ink pads uh, <laughs> these are my own ink pads so they have been um, well used and well loved already and they're still juicy you're still getting all those fabulous effects excellent and Linda says once dry are these inks permanent or will they have will these inks move if they're made wet again so you can reactivate them. Right, yeah, you can reactivate them. Okay, fabulous, that's great. Any more questions, please just message in. Uh, Hayley says, I could play all day making beautiful backgrounds using different types of inky techniques. These inks are gonna be absolutely perfect for that. Susan says, I really love the technique and concept card. Um, Fred, 171, hello. Late again, I was shopping with Totally Tiffany. Oh. You're back now. Totally You're Tiffany, to what is she these. like? She made me buy a ton of storage really? every week. That Tiffany. An absolute nightmare. Yeah. I had to get a load of buddy bags, a load of paper takers, all, all of it. It wasn't my choice. I bought a load of those paper takers the other week and it's actually revolutionised all my um, paper storage. Absolutely. Um, which yeah. I've now put into yet another room. Yes. Yeah. We are, we've got some of that. So we've got some Totally Tiffany coming up on tonight's mm. graphic. Oh, actually, we've got a I fabulous saw that. bundle. Mm. Mm, I'm Very thinking, exciting. do Becky and Lily need to go shopping between shows? I mean, mm. when do we not, let's be honest. Yes. We'll be mm. sat on that sofa later on, eating jam, jam tarts and having a cup of tea and shopping. Oh, as we living the life. Do. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so you're going to show us more techniques, <gasps> more samples with these? Gosh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I did mention earlier you can stamp with these. Let's do exactly that. These stamp beautifully. You can get lots of different effects with your stamping. Whether you want to be doing a crisp stamped image or whether you want to go a little bit mixed media like we're going to do here. We're bringing in the... I always find this really hard to say. They've done alliteration, so they know that Lily's going to get tongue-tied over it. Majestic mandalas. There we go. I've said it once. That's it for the rest of the show. Won't be saying it again. But like we were saying earlier with these stamp sets, what you get in, in all of the four different sets, is you're getting that main focal... Um, focal stamp it's about four by six roughly uh, then you've got your sentiments and again we've got that sort of building system with these you can mix and match to create your own sentiments your own sayings so it could be birthday wishes it could be best best wishes you've got the different options on there it could even be best birthday and then this fabulous stamp is your texture stamp which is great for building all your backgrounds but let's focus on that large stamp that we get within this collection I'm using magnetic, my magnetic stamping platform. You could use your rocker blocks, you could use any of your stamping platforms. Completely up to you when it comes uh, to your stamping. And all we're going to do is lay down our stamp onto our cardstock. I'm not worrying too much about where I'm positioning it, as long as I've got uh, a stamp um, 
portion of the stamp all over my cardstock, we will be absolutely fine. And all we're going to need to do is just pop our magnets down onto our cardstock. Now, what we're going to do next is going to bring in some of our ink pads. So we're using through, we're going to do a little bit of ombre stamping. So let's start at the top with our sailor's wake. Just going to ink all over my stamp. I say all over my stamp, onto the top third of my stamp. Again, we're working in thirds because we are using three different colours. We're working in almost like that rule of three, that thirds. And then we're going to go in with our awakening forest into that middle section. I'm going to overlap ever so slightly between the two ink pads. If you do contaminate your ink pads a little bit, perhaps you've got a little bit of uh, blue on your green or vice versa, just take a piece of scrap paper and just literally drag your ink pad over that scrap paper mm -hmm. and you'll sort of get rid of that okay. uh, colour. So nothing to worry about at all. All we're going to do now is just turn it round. I will have one of my magnets in the way, so I will need to re-stamp uh, over that section in just a moment. So I'm going to stamp and then, of course, move that magnet out of the way. I'm just going to hope this holds into position. You might be a little bit better off with your uh, rocker blocks if you find those a little bit easier. But just firm, even pressure all over that stamp. That magnet's still in the way. Move that out of the way. There we go. Had to transfer. Now, I'm not worried about getting a crisp, crisp stamped impression. This is going to be a background. We're actually going to make it look a little bit more muted. So we're just wanting to lay down that colour. We don't want that particularly crisp stamped impression. Ooh, that's, that looks lovely. Doesn't that look gorgeous? That's perfect for what we want. We're not wanting that full image because we're going to distress it a little bit more. Now, with these being water-based inks, they do clean up super, super easily from all your stamps. So you don't need to worry uh, about that. Of course, we've got our stamp cleaning station and solution on the show. So that is going to make cleaning your stamps an absolute breeze. But just for speed, I'm just going to give it a quick little wipe off. Uh, but if you do pick up that stamp cleaning station, then that is absolutely ideal for cleaning off all of these stamps it back onto my carrier sheet just so I know exactly where it is but this is where the magic is going to start so let's move our stamp platform out of the way and then we're going to bring in one of our fine spray mister bottles now I talked about this being a background we weren't worrying about it being a perfect stamped image because all we're going to do is we're going to take our fine spray mister just get it spraying and then we're just going to spray over the background just give us that diffused effect and we start to see those colours run. Wow, doesn't that look fabulous for a background? So we weren't worried about having that crisp stamped impression because we want to get those colours to merge into each other. Doesn't that look fabulous? Great for your backgrounds, love that. So we'll leave that to one side for just a moment to uh, start to dry off. It's completely up to you how much water you add on. You can keep going if you want a really diffused effect, you can keep spraying or you can just add a little bit of water if you want um, just that subtle diffused effect. Again, it's choices. It's completely up to you what sort of effect you want to create. You've got complete creative freedom uh, when it comes to these ink pads, which is brilliant. Now, while that's drying, we're going to create our background, sort of our uh, further back background for our card. Again, watercolour card, and I didn't mention earlier I was using watercolour card uh, for this just because we're adding a fair amount of water. And we're taking another piece of watercolour card for this particular background. Taking the same ink pad colours directly onto my glass mat. Just going to swirl a little bit of colour down onto that. That's our sailor's wake. Same with our awakening forest. And then finally, I mean, it looks like I'm making a right mesh, thinking, blimey, you've decorated the glass mat. What's this all about? We're going to do exactly the same with our final colour. So we've got that even sort of distribution of colours onto that. Let's bring back in our fine spray mister. I'm going to give this a good old mist onto all those colours. So we've got plenty of water onto that. Can always add more, though, if we need it. Take our piece of cardstock. I mean, how easy is this? We're literally just going to swirl it around and start to dab it into those colours and just pick up some of the colours. I'm not worrying about that area in the centre because that's going to have our topper stuck over that area. I just want to make sure that I've got enough on the edges. I'm going to get a little bit of green there. You can just have a look if you want a little bit more green down that bottom section there. And then just start to pick up and play with your colours. And look how abstract, how funky that looks as a background just by literally popping some ink onto your glass mat, 
spritzing it with water and smooching your cardstock into it. How cool is that? It looks perfect for something like an underwater uh, scene yeah. it might be. Perhaps you've got mermaid stamps you want to add mm. into the centre of that. Lots of options with that, but how cool just by adding a little bit of ink and a little bit of water onto our backgrounds. So, so easy to do. I'm going to leave that to one side. We're going to bring in one that's already dry, just so we don't have to wait for that to dry. You could blast it with a heat tool if you like, but again, same sort of idea with, with that as you... Uh, as before, you'll end up moving that colour. So you do just take care, just do be mindful of that. Exactly the same ink pad colours, but of course, every single time you'll get a slightly different effect. So this one that I did last night, using exactly the same colours, you just get a slightly different look and feel uh, to each of your backgrounds, which I think is really nice because it's almost like every single piece is a unique piece of artwork which is really special, especially if you're making to sell uh, or just making to gift. You know that every single piece is kind of one of a kind. It's a one-off. Um, you'll never get two which are exactly the same, which I think is fabulous. Again, the black cardstock is back. We're going to mat and lay it onto uh, a slightly larger piece of black card. And again, doesn't that just make that pop? Mm. And then finally, we're going to pop it onto our card base. So again, tape pens, definitely an absolute essential. I mean, we had somebody commenting this morning saying they'd never used them before and they just started using them and what a game changer they were and they certainly are. I mean, not just for your car making, I know some people actually use them for wrapping their presents. Uh, some people don't like to see the seller tape and this is absolutely perfect um, for use with that if that's what you want to do. But great for your crafting, great for your matting and layering and even fabulous for your construction as well, which is almost unheard of really for a tape pen. So that's our card base all layered up. Let's bring back in our piece that's just drying. You can see that fabulous result with your mandalas. I'm going to bring in another one that I did uh, yesterday that's already dry. You can see, again, same stamp, same colours, mm -hmm. same technique, but again, it looks ever so slightly different just because every single piece is unique. But I'll set that to one side. I'll use that at a later date for another card. We'll use the one that's already dry. Uh, and then we'll start to mat and layer this card up. We'll pop this onto some of our black card stock. Again, quarter of an inch larger. Just so you get that fine, that thin little mat and layer. Uh, gives you that little pop of black, but not too much that's going to be too overpowering. So pop that onto that. And then we're going to stick this onto our card base with some foam tape, I think. Just for that dimension. Of course, you'll find all your foam tapes, all your foam pads or your adhesives on the website. Great time to stock up when you've got double points and you've got that 20% off. Definitely. I know that's the time when I like to stock up on my essentials. When I know I'm getting getting double points, it always does help. You know what they say, points mean prizes after all. They do all <laughs> add up. When you're getting double points, it's absolutely brilliant. So I always say as well, make sure you have some of your foam tape in the centre, just so you get that extra bit of support. You don't get a saggy middle, which is, you know, never good. Um, it gives you that uh, more professional finish by adding that little bit of foam in the centre just as that extra bit of support. So lining that up, going for my blue at the top, my green at the bottom. I just find that works better to my eye. You could have it the other way if you wanted. You could have had it sort of going in that direction, completely up to you. But in order to finish it off, we've stamped one of those sentiments. Again, one of those sentiments that you're getting uh, included in the range. Just saying love. I mean, this could be a, a card for anything. It could be an anniversary. It could be a love uh, to one of your best friends. It could be anything at all. Just a pretty card. But I think these are going to be perfect for your male cards as well, for your, perhaps your teenage cards, any of those trickier cards when you don't want something too feminine, but you want something super, super pretty uh, and super um, sort of funky. I think these will be absolutely brilliant. And how easy was that? Creating two different backgrounds, using our stamps, using the inks, very clean and simple card, but doesn't it look cool when you're bringing out all those different techniques using your fabulous duet ink pads? Absolutely. It looks gorgeous. It's like um, imagining sort of flying over the Seychelles and looking down at all the Ooh, islands. That's yeah. what that reminds me of. Um, mm. We also have um, lots of people saying how very much they love those colours. Um, Fred171 says, ooh, ah. Oh. 
and Angela Grau says, my sentiments exactly. Um, love seeing the colours change when you use the spritz bottle, says Rebecca Davies. Love the colours from Rosalind. And we saw the people singing that song oh that we're dear. not going to sing. Um, but I think they look really beautiful. Um, Fred171 says, after playing a cross right this morning, I needed to study some British history. What am I like? I felt exactly the same. I felt really bad that I didn't know enough about British history, um, about all, well, all of those monarchs. Um, lovely. I think that all the different techniques you're showing us are really quite, um, they're really accessible for everybody because sometimes people, we forget people are watching that have never crafted before or just starting, or perhaps you buy the things, but you're a little bit reluctant to try out any new techniques. I know that, you know, we tend to stick to the same old formula, same, same type of card perhaps, or the same um, different techniques, or same tools but being able to show us how to do different things with those ink pads like making all those backgrounds is really quite key so really enjoying that um i am just going to look for something over here i'm going over there hold on this is what i need um we are going to because obviously we've been showing you um details with those um stamps um obviously you need all the bits and pieces to go with your um stamping selection so i've got here I'm hoping this is the right one. I put the right one up. No, I picked up too many stamping things. Um, hold on, hold on. Do you know what? I showed. You, I got this out too early. You're going to have to watch later on and see all of those bits. We're going to show um, your stamping um, cleaning station and your stamp cleaning solution. Um, I didn't have a stamp cleaner um, and I didn't realise I needed one. And then when I got one, I was like, wow, I spent quite a lot of time cleaning all those mucky stamps that I had. Really useful to have. £18.88 or $25.11. Platinum price is £15.10 or $20.09. And you're going to get double points on everything as before. Um, when you... Do you need to clean all of your stamps every time you use them or do you just do you just dab them with your uh, wipes? But this makes sure that you're getting every single tiny element of ink off them, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of us here, we are not setting the best example in terms of cleaning stamps. I know I'm terrible, but if you can clean your stamps every time you use them, then you're going to make sure that you've removed all that ink and next time you come to... Um, do a project and you lay down your stamp, you're not going to accidentally have that ink transfer because they are going to be squeaky clean. There is a difference, of course, between having clean stamps and stained stamps. If your stamp's stained, that's no issue at all. That won't affect their performance. It's just about them being clean so you don't have ink that's going to transfer onto your surface. But it's a great bundle because not only are you getting your uh, actual cleaning station, we're giving you the solution as well, which is brilliant. And it's super, super easy to use. You've got full instructions on the packaging. You can't go wrong, definitely. It's kind of a little bit of a say as I, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Please do clean your stamps. I'm terrible for it. I've got myself one of them. I need to use it more. So you guys at home, do the right thing and clean your stamps. It does make a difference. Mm. I completely agree with you. Um, Fred171 says, um, with that technique, with all the inks on your face, on the, on your face, on the mat, oh. she says, I wish my, doing my makeup in the morning was as easy as that. Imagine being able to smash your face into the counter and yeah. being able to look lovely. Yeah. That would be really handy. Maybe that is something one of those makeup artists that perhaps is watching the show will create a little mat where you can put your makeup on the mat and then just pop your face down and then bring up and you look lovely. Maybe, maybe it's something we're going to invent. Go on Dragon's Den and maybe try and sell it to people. Um, the Expressions by Candy says, when, the, when, the paper, when any of the paper gets wet, it tends to curl up um, when, she, when she does this. How do you prevent that and get it nice and straight and flat again to look like a professional card? So how so would you do that? What I find is as it dries, it will tend to um, sort of even out a little bit. So if we look at this one, this is starting to dry out. You can see it's starting to uh, level out. Of course, like I was saying earlier, do go for your watercolour card uh, when you're using your water-based mediums and when you're using uh, a lot of a lot of sort of wetness onto there. You can see it's starting to level out. However, if you find that it's not levelled out as much as you like, flip it over and just blast it from the reverse using a heat tool. That should flatten it out. Another top tip that I tend to do is when I'll stick um, so I'll leave everything to dry, I'll bring back in this card as, as an example, and then I'll stick this layer onto my black mat. What I'll then do is I'll actually pop that layer under my glass mat, under where I work, hmm. just as a weighted surface while it's drying, and uh -huh. then I'll work on my next layer. And then as it dries, by having it under that weight, it'll fl help flatten it out. Oh, so that's good. always a top tip. So as I'm um, 
As my mats and lasers dry, and I'll be working on a different part of the card, so I might be stamping my sentiment. Then when I come back to it, I'll take that out from underneath my black glass mat, and it should be perfectly flat. Fantastic. But yeah, definitely make sure you've got the right sort of car stock. Your watercolour car stock will make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. Great, great, good top tip um, for us. Um, let us know if you've got any other questions. Um, while Lily's here, she'll be able to answer any questions at all. Anything. In the whole wide world. Ooh. Lily will know the answer. Apart from anything to do with British monarchs, <laughs> yeah. we'll be all right. Anything else? That's the yeah. only thing I don't yeah, know. Don't, don't give us any history questions no. at all, or merely geography questions, because I'm really rubbish at geography. I'm good at some bits of geography, horrendous at others. Really? Yeah. I'm good at flags. Oh, okay. Love a good flag. Oh, okay. Probably being like, you know, visual learner, that sort of thing, yeah. you know, being creative. But yeah, I love flags. I don't know why I find them ever so fascinating. But uh, <laughs> there you go. I don't know where anything is. Uh, I'm very bad at like world geography. Um, I'm not great at that. Which is when I auditioned as a weather girl, it was really oh. useless because they'd say, well, there's cold front coming in for Cambridge and I'd be going, well, where's that? Like this, because I had no idea where it was. I'll be honest, I, do have, I have to say, I do have quite a good sense of direction to navigate myself, but give me a map and tell me to point to something on the map. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Could not tell you. Yeah. We've all got different skills. Absolutely. I like yes. to think that I'm a, I'm a crafter, not, yes, a, not a geographer or whatever they call them. Yeah. Geographer? Yeah. I'm not one of those. What, Cartologist, what maybe. Cartologist does mm, maps, don't they? Definitely not one of those. Not one of those, no. 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 <laughs> we'll stick to crafting, I think. So Absolutely, yeah, I think we should stick easier. to crafting. Um, and today's all been about giving you this first look of these really beautiful ink pads. They've got a really lovely kind of chalky effect um, to them. And you're going to show us some more techniques with them, oh, are you? Gosh, yeah. I mean, I could stand here all day and all night going through techniques to show you all. I don't think anyone would want to see that quite frankly. I think you get quite bored of me not getting my teeth in. But honestly, <laughs> the amount of techniques, I know when I get home tonight, I'll be playing because it's one of those you start playing with them and you get more and more and more ideas. And I'm just so excited for you guys to get these home and to see what you guys actually come up with yourselves. Because I know you'll come up with lots of ideas I would never have thought of. I think that's something we find a lot in craft. We look at other people's work, you think, I would never have thought of mm -hmm. that. But it's just inspiring each other, which I think is absolutely fabulous. Now I'm going, to get, I'm going to bring in quite a lot of layers for this one, so we're going to be bringing in the inks, the stamps, the stencils. Let's bring in some of our clear sparkle pens as well. Let's bring it all together. Let's get a little bit inky. I'm getting ready to have inky, I'm saying getting ready. I do already have inky fingers, let's be honest. It's got a nice, nice blue thumb, uh, but that is part of the joy, I have to say, when you are working with your inks. But of course, like I say, with them being water-based, they do wash off easily. Now we're starting off with watercolour card. Let's bring in some of our inks. We're going to go for Sailor's Wake, Awakening Forest and Soft Heather. Let's start off with our Sailor's Wake. Not worrying too much about being particularly even, particularly precise with this. Let's lay down some colour. We're not working in ombre fashion, we're going to work in sort of patches. So we have one at the top. I'm going to say I'm doing it randomly, but I think all you guys know at home, my brain does not do so well with random, so of course <laughs> there is a sort of order to this. Uh, but if you do do random, then yes, uh, definitely go for that. But yeah, it's, that's not happening, we all know. There's no point in me saying I'm, I'm doing this randomly because I cer certainly am. Let's bring back in our blending brushes. Let's go for our blue one. And then we're just going to start to blend out these areas that we've just laid down. So like I say, we're not worrying too much about it being super um, blended, super smooth in terms of that lay down of colour. And of course, we are working onto our watercolour cardstock. So it will have that um, natural slight unevenness to it with it being that textured cardstock. But that's no problem at all. It's just going to add more interest onto our background. So there's our blue onto there. Let's move on to our next colour. Let's go to, for our Awakening Forest. It's a gorgeous colour, this. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. It's a bit like a, a mossy green sort of colour. Hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. Just gorgeous. Let's lay some of that down onto our cardstock. Just swirling that ink on. I mean, how beautiful. That chalky finish is just absolutely stunning. Just something that little bit different going to be something that you don't already have in your crafty stash. It's not something that we already have within that spectrum of our range. So it's just offering you something that I don't think you'll already have. It's just giving you different options. By no means does this mean any of my other ink pads are redundant. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be using my water reactives or my pigments or my quick dries. It's just another thing that we can get playing with, giving us another option uh, when we are crafting, which is 
It's what it's all about. It's having options, lots of different crafty things to play with. And of course, we are bringing you stamps and stencils, but think about all the different stamps, different stencils, different embossing folders that you've already got in your crafty stash that you can actually mix and match with these. It's not just about uh, the new stuff that you'll be picking up. It's about how it'll work with everything you've already got. And I think using ink pads, they will revitalize some of your older collections. Perhaps you've got stamps that you've not used for years uh, that you want to sort of bring back out. I think it's perfect when you are getting new ink pads to sort of get out those old, perhaps slightly unloved stamps and just give them that new lease of life. So finally, our last color is gonna be our soft heather. You can see I've got a little bit of contamination in that ink pad. I'm not going to worry about that at all. Um, I will just be dabbing that on a little bit of scrap paper and that will get out uh, that purple from the, uh, sorry, the other colour from the purple and it'll get it back to its original colour so with no problem at all. So instead of going from ombre from uh, light to dark, we're just working in patches to lay down uh, the colour on tier to give it um, quite an atmospheric look if you like. Of course, I'm using these colours, but you could be using any colours at all, getting 12 ink pads within the range. So whatever your sort of occasion, whatever your preference, whatever your favourite colour is, or perhaps the person you're making that card for, whatever their favourite colour is, chances are you're going to have the perfect colour within that collection because you are getting so much and such a range of different sorts of colours as well, which I think is great. It's almost like a stormy sky that you've got there, well, isn't, isn't it? it? It's very atmospheric, definitely. Mm. It could almost be underwater, perhaps I'm thinking like the very bottom of the ocean. Uh, perhaps it could be some coral knocking about, maybe um, messaging a bottle, an old abandoned mm. ship, I'm sort yeah. of thinking. Uh, but for this one, we're thinking more twilight, we're thinking more night sky. But let's go for a little bit of that gorgeous technique where you actually add your water. So we're going to bring back in our water and you could be using your spritz bottle, but to have larger droplets of water, we're just going to go straight from our water, dipping our fingers into that pot of water and then literally just flicking onto our cardstock. So, so easy to do. Now we're going to leave that to actually let that water do its thing. You can see already it's starting, that colour is starting to be lifting. You're starting to get all that chalky effect where that's separating from when, you, when you've got the ink underneath. You're getting all those incredible effects onto there. It's that reactiveness you've got of the ink pad, that hybrid nature. It's water-based and water-reactive. It's allowing all this chalky effect to sort of come to the surface. You can watch it, you can see it. God, we've got a fabulous camera angle. George is doing a good old job there on the close-up. <laughs> you can see that in front of your very eyes start to actually change and transform. Now, all you need to do in order to sort of stop that, if you want to inhibit that, if you think that's gone far enough, you've got enough of that chalky finish, just blast it, blast it with a heat tool. So let's bring out, I'll show you actually drying it with a heat tool, so we've not shown that uh, just yet. I'm hoping, yes, we have got a heat tool. It's down almost like um, the craters of a moon, isn't it? Mm, definitely. <laughs> so let's go for our heat tool. Uh, you will find this on the uh, shop of the day, I do believe. You, of course, got your UK and your US versions. Fabulous tool, absolutely essential, of course, when it comes to your heat embossing, but drying off anything like that, drying off your inks, it's going to be absolutely ideal for your shrink plastic as well, for your flower forming foam. Um, lots of uses, but of course, it is a crafty essential, and to have it with that fabulous crafter's companion branding is brilliant, because it matches with your Gemini, it matches with your uh, hot glue gun as well. You can see got all that amazing chalky effect, that almost that like oxidised effect with our um, drops onto there. Doesn't it look super, super cool and funky? Now, where we've got the areas uh, where we've got a lot of water, all I'm going to do, just to speed up the process, just so we're not literally washing, washing ink dry. You've heard of, it's like watching <laughs> paint dry. This is like, it's like watching ink dry. We're just going to dab those uh, nice and quickly, just to speed that up so that's nice and dry now doesn't that look super super cool and funky and i think by using um the inks in sort of i want to say blotches but it sounds a doesn't sound particularly uh, pretty but in areas rather than in an ombre it gives it a really atmospheric look now the fabulous thing i say the fabulous thing one of the many fabulous things about these ink pads is they are actually layerable so let's bring back our soft heather and let's take one of our stencils from this decorative trio. 
love that one. I did a card, you might have seen it um, posted on my social media. I think it was last week. I inked through and then I actually used my art liner, uh, one of those fine liners, to actually draw through the outline. It was Ooh. a super cool technique. So easy to do, uh, but it looks super, super funky. So don't just think about using your, uh, your inks with your stencils. Bring out your pens as well and you'll get some fab results. So let's take our stencil. Again, I'm definitely not taping it into position. I'm not wanting that crisp stenciled image. I just want to get that little bit of interest into the background. So if it moves a little bit, then that's no issue at all. And all we're doing is we're going over just a small section of the stencil. Shut up and get my teeth in stencil using <laughs> my soft heather blimey. You can see we're starting to layer even over the top of uh, what is perhaps a darker colour. We can start to see um, this purple ink pad. Isn't that super, super cool? I have to say I love my water reactive ink pads, but you can't do this technique with a water reactive ink pad. You just, because we've not got that opacity, we've not got that chalky effect finish, you can't layer them like we're doing here. And I think it looks super funky to add some of that stencil over the top of those water droplets that we've got on there. It looks super, super cool. But how easy is this to do to start to layer this up, start to build all those layers? And that's a brilliant thing about creating your own backgrounds. It's all the different layers that you're going to add on. Starting off with your inks, then you're bringing in some of your water. Then we're going in with some of our stencils. And then we're going to, after, we're going to bring in some of our inks. So lots and lots of different options, uh, lots of uh, techniques you can do with these, which is so much fun uh, to actually build these up. Let's go in now with a different stencil. This is from our textile trio. Love this one. It makes me think almost of waves. Uh, I think it's super, super cool. Uh, very abstract, so you could be using it for lots of different effects. Let's go in with our sailor's wake. I'm looking where I've got gaps where I might want to add it in. Let's add a little bit over that large water droplet there. Again, of course, I'm working with my blending brushes. It's so easy to work with, uh, with these when you're using your duet ink pads to get that lay down of colour. And then let's pop a little bit down there. I think that's just about good enough, I think, for my uh, stencils. So let's move those out of the way and let's bring back some of our stamps. So we're going to use our Fairy Glade. This is an absolutely stunning collection of stamps. I was talking earlier about these textured stamps that we've got. And let's use this script stamp. They're going to do what I call my world famous stamp in hand technique. Okay. I don't know if you've seen this before, Becky. It's no. very exciting, it's very technical. So we talk a lot about how fabulous our stamping platforms are, our rock blocks. Yeah. For Lily stamping hand technique, don't need any of that. Okay. All you need is hand. Hence the name stamping hand. <laughs> All I'm gonna do is I'm just popping that onto my glass mat, inking it up, not worried about getting a um, ink all over that evenly. Take it in your hand, plop it down, yeah. press not not firmly, not all over the stamp, just, just in areas, not worrying about it too much, and you get that little bit of texture. Okay. Might go for a second generation, but it just gives you that really subtle uh, sort of background technique. We don't want that um, even, crisp stamped impression. We just want that little bit of texture. So that's with our Awakening Forest. Let's go in with, hmm, let's go for Soft Heather. So again, I mean, how abstract, how easy is this to do? Literally taking a stamp, lobbing a little bit of ink on there, taking it in your hand and stamping it over a background. It could not be more simple, but all it's going to do is it's going to start to build up those layers, adding that extra interest, which is what this is absolutely all about. So, so much fun. We're literally just playing at this point, which is absolutely what it's all about. And how fabulous does that look? Building up those layers, building up that interest onto the background. Very, very quick and easy to do but really, really fun to create. When you've got all the right tools, it makes it an absolute breeze. Now let's pop that back onto our carrier sheet. Now talking of stamps, you are getting so many different stamps included in each of the four sets uh, that you're getting. So we've used some of our texture stamps now. However, we're gonna fast forward uh, a little bit. We've got our two stencils stuck together here. I think you've got gorgeous fine detail within that one. All we've gone ahead and done is we've actually, you can see I used exactly the same technique, exactly the same ink pad colours, but how different does that look? Mm. The only difference on this one is we've stamped around the edge, we've stamped that fairy glade, and then we've just popped one of the fairies into the centre. Now this one's a little bit darker than the one that I've just done. So I want to make that stamped artwork stand out a little bit more. Now I was talking about this technique earlier and absolutely going to go ahead and bring in our uh, clear sparkle pens. 
So our crystal clear sparkle pad, we're just going to go in and highlight some of the design. So over the buds that we've got here, it's going to make that design pop a little bit more, but it's also going to add on that sparkle. So just lifting up that colour that's underneath, it's going to give it that little bit of an oxidised effect with that added bonus of the sparkle, which is going to give us a really nice finish onto our stamped images. You could be doing the same with water and that would lift that colour up underneath and give you that chalky effect underneath. But by using your sparkle pen, of course, you get that added sparkle. Another technique that you could do is you could lift up the colour using your water brush or your uh, brush with water. Mm -hmm. And then you could go back over the top once it's dry with a different colour of ink to colour them in in a different colour. And that will give you a more intense look rather than just going straight over with a different colour by lifting it up with water first and then going over the top with your uh, different colour of ink. We can see how this starts to make them pop that little bit more. So absolutely grab yourself a pack of those um, sparkle pens. If you've not got some already, they're definitely one you're going to want to be adding to your crafty stash. Just going to go ahead and fill in all it is like sneaking into the garden and seeing the fairies by the moonlight, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Isn't it so, so pretty? Love this image. And of course, you've got two different fairy stamps within that set, so you can build your own compositions. You could have it without a fairy. Maybe you've got other uh, stamps in your collection that you're going to add to the centre, other die cuts, maybe uh, sort of silhouette die cuts would work perfectly. Um, but lots of different options. But just adding our sparkle onto there. Doesn't that look lovely? Doesn't that transform it? Now the final little finishing touch to this background is I'm going to bring in one of my metallic uh, pens and uh, this is our silver ingot. Just to highlight our fairy that little bit more I'm just going to take uh, my pen. I don't know if this one's working. <gasps> I think I've got a faulty one. Oh there we go. This, this one's flowing a little bit better. And a little bit like we did on um, that demo on this morning's play across right like we did with our white acrylic paint marker we're just adding a few little highlights of the silver onto there and that's just going to make her pop even more makes her stand out uh, that little bit more against that quite dark background so a few highlights onto there and that finishes off our background really really quite nicely mm. again of course we're bringing back in there it is again the black card stock because we've got that stamping in the black, it will really draw your eye into the centre. It will draw your eye into those stamped images and make, uh, make those a real focal point of your cards. So if we map that onto our black card stock. But so different, that first background we just created using the same inks, it looks so, so different. Every single time you'll get different results, which I think is, is half the fun of these. It's just experimenting and seeing what you come up with. I'm going to pop this finally onto our card base. So again, we're using our multi-purpose card for our card base. With it being 300 GSM, you've got that lovely sturdy card base. Uh, you know, you're not going to get any cards with, with Bambi legs when you use your multi-purpose card. <laughs> I mean, look at that shimmer on there that we've got That's on those boards. Isn't that pretty? But we talked earlier about stamping with these. We did do our uh, kind of ad abstract stamping where we weren't worried too much about getting that crisp stamped impression. But if you want a crisp impression, then absolutely you can get it with these ink pads. That is the Awakening Forest. And then we've just used the Sailor's Wake uh, for that sentiment. Don't they stamp beautifully? So not just for backgrounds, uh, not just for painting with, you can use them for stamping, you can use them for so, so many. And I really hope that on this show, I've sort of given you a little bit of a taste of some of the sorts of things you can do with these ink pads. Of course, so many more techniques. These are just my ideas. Of course, you guys at home are going to be having tons more ideas. I'm hoping your, your minds are sort of worrying of all the different sorts of things that you can be doing with these because there is such a, a wealth of techniques that you can be playing with when you get these ink pads home. They're just absolutely fantastic. They're one of those that you, they definitely want to sit down and have a good old play with uh, and experiment with lots of techniques. Maybe new techniques, or perhaps techniques you've not used in a very long time. I think these are going to be absolutely perfect uh, for just having a good old crafty play. And then finally, just finishing it off. I feel like that's wonky, but I'm not... Yeah, I think it's stri straight enough. Finishing off with our sentiment, stamped using our duet ink pads. So we've created our background. We've done a little bit of stamping, stenciling, 
and then bringing it all together using our fabulous duet ink pads. Love, love, love these ink pads, love the stencils and love the stamps and I hope you guys at home are loving them as much as I am. That is lovely, beautiful as always. Um, Lois says, so very pretty, Tammy, so pretty. Kim Nesbitt, Edwards says, I really, Edwardson um, says, I really like this stamp. And Mandy May says, that is looking awesome, Lily. Very different um, uh, techniques you're showing us and very different samples you're coming up with to show us how diverse um, these new ink pads are going to be. Uh, so we're going to give you the opportunity to grab another drink um, so you can settle that back down with us for the last sort of half an hour of the show. And um, we're going to go for a quick break now. We'll see you back in a couple of moments. Many of our viewers bring up time and time again, and that's our wax seal seal gate. Thinking though, it might not work as well because I've put too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've forgotten to put me um, me thing in place. <laughs> because I have a way of words, but I think that doesn't engage with that and can come out all wrong. Water. That, that wasn't the one you thing. just washed your brush in, was it? Sorry. Yes, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it wasn't, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm going to have to say, it's a slip of the tongue. I'm going to say it's maybe to do with my Scottish accent. I'm maybe going to say it's because of Mr. Uh, ben Mosby. He is, well, yeah, he doesn't help matters. Um, I've made pots that have exploded when I fired them. I've done zips in inside out. It happens to everybody. We've all spilt our glitter all over our project or knocked the water over. You're right. I've just noticed I've got my dress on inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was messing about doing some backgrounds with the sparkling, took the lid off it and managed to catch the pot somehow and the whole thing came towards me, down my front, across my lap, onto the floor. I went to reach for the water and, you know, do the, the, the tapping with the, the, and so there was less tapping and more sort of a tsunami. Um, <laughs> I've got some... <gasps> We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the going as a customer come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family hello everybody welcome back um first look today is all about these beautiful duet um, it, was, it sounds wrong on my tongue duet ink pads they are absolutely beautiful lots of them have got really 
delicious sounding names um, I did notice that um, earlier on and somebody did mention that in the comments like they, they, make, they make you feel hungry things like rosy apple and raspberry ripple um, but really beautiful kind of chalky um, ink pads that we've got today Hayley says a beautiful card Lily I love watching your demos you have created some really kind of diverse um, demos diff different ways of using these ink pads um, on the show today um, now these aren't going to be available until Tuesday um, so we're just giving you a sneaky peek so you can see what they're like I am sure they are going to fly out so if you do like the look of them I suggest that you um, set your alarm for Tuesday morning before they all sell out um, we do have special deals for you throughout the day so if you use the code crown 20 um, you will get 20 percent off various items on the website and um, this is to celebrate the coronation of king charles today and then everything up until midnight tonight i'm oh, sorry midnight on, on monday because we have a bank holiday monday um, here in the uk and that's going to allow you to have double points as well so definitely now's the time to start buying the bits and pieces that perhaps you've been wondering about um, and not, not quite sure whether you're going to go ahead with them but we're going to go back to these ink pads to show you what else they can do and remember they're going to be launched on Tuesday so what else have you got for us Lily right should we do a little bit of watercoloring oh yeah I do say it time and time again coloring is one of my favorite things to do and of course when I first got these ink pads I was sort of looking at them and I was thinking okay what are the different techniques that I can do with these so I started off with uh, my blending very much like we did for our first demonstration so we looked at them, we thought, right, we can blend them. They blend together, they give us that lovely chalky finish. Then I tried my stamp with them. We've seen already this stamp beautifully, whether you're doing Lily's famous stamping hand technique or whether you want to get your perfectly crisp stamped images for your sentiments or for any other type of stamp, we know that they can give us that crisp stamped impression. Then of course, for me, it's natural to sort of think, right, can I color with these and how can I color with them? And what sort of result are they going to give me? Now we can absolutely colour with these and they colour like a dream. And that's exactly what we're going to look at for this demo. We did sort of touch on this a little bit on that first demonstration when we coloured in that butterfly. We're going to go into a little bit more depth with this demo. Now the magnif oh, oh, get me teeth in. <laughs> magnificent butterflies. Yay! Managed to say it. I thought majestic mandalas was bad enough, but blimey, magnificent butterflies. This is let's be honest it's probably is my favorite stamp set within this collection of course butterflies they're a winner every single time uh, whether you're going to go really um, sort of pink and pretty for your your colorways if you, even if you're going to go grungy maybe you're going to stamp in browns you're going to go quite grungy with this it's going to work perfectly as well perhaps you're even just going to use this away from your duet ink pads perhaps you're going to heat emboss maybe in a gold embossing powder lots of options with this stamp but butterflies they are timeless they are absolutely stunning we showed on that first demo how you can actually use small sections and fussy cut around them so it's not just about using it as that full panel but for this particular card we're going to use the full panel and we've taken a four by four inch piece uh, of our watercolor card and we've just stamped using our noir black waterproof ink pad now you definitely need a waterproof ink pad to stamp with uh, for this particular uh, sort of technique just because we don't want that stamped line to move so we've stamped that we've left it to dry and now we're all good to go and start painting now one thing i want you guys to promise 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 you're never ever going to do with these right never ever 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 take a wet paintbrush to your ink pad don't ever do it because what you'll do is you'll end up diluting the ink that you've got within your ink pad you might just think oh it's a little bit of water it's not going to make a difference but over time you'll dilute the color within that ink pad and you'll never get back to that original color of ink what you always need to do when you're doing your painting is take your ink pad actually onto your glass mat any sort of non-stick uh, non-porous surface could be your glass mat could be your craft mat anything like that but never take your paintbrush directly to that ink pad. If there's anything you've learned from today, please never ever do that. I mean, I've seen people do it before and it sort of sets me on edge a little bit. So definitely don't do that. Dip your paintbrush and I'm using one of these amazing Royal and Lang Nickel ones. I think we've still got some of these left on the website. I know Sheena brought them uh, a couple of weeks ago. They are my paintbrush of choice. Like I was saying on that first demo, I do prefer uh, to use a paintbrush rather than a water brush. I just find I have more control. It's kind of 
um, up to me how much water I'm adding. Yeah. Uh, but it, perhaps if you're a little bit less confident with your painting, and then by having a water brush that controls the flow of water, it can be a little bit easier. So it is totally up to you, whatever you find easiest to work with. I'd say just try both out and whatever works for you, then definitely go with that. So first layer, I would say start off with quite a watery layer onto your image, going all over. So we added some of the water to our ink and that allows us to get that smooth layer of this blue. We go with the sailor's wake all over this butterfly. Then we're gonna go in, I'm gonna start to add a little bit more dimension. We've got the lovely color onto there, but to add more dimension, less water and more ink. So I'm not adding any more water. So my ink's gonna be a lot more intense. And towards the center of the body, we're just gonna to start to paint into there to start to build up those layers, build up that depth and dimension. I always, when I'm coloring my butterflies, I tend to have the edges, the very tips of the wings as that palest part of the image. And then the center near the body, I tend to have that the darkest area. And once you're happy that you've built up enough light and shade, you've got a little bit of depth onto there, then that butterfly is done. We're gonna move on to the next one. Same technique, so it's a case of once you've mastered that technique once, you will really be away uh, and you'll be creating and colouring your butterflies in no time at all. So let's go in next, we go for this soft heather, beautiful colour. So same technique, squishing it out onto our craft mat. Let's take our paintbrush and let's just watercolour onto that. Do you like butterflies in real life? I do, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I think they're gorgeous. I love it when, uh, when it's sort of getting to spring and summer and you're out, out in the open, you see a butterfly. I think they are absolutely beautiful creatures. I can't say I'm not, not knowledgeable. Um, I mean, you could say, oh, Lily, what's this butterfly? I'd just say, do you know what, Becky, it's a, it's a pretty butterfly. <laughs> I don't know all the different uh, species or anything like that, but yeah, I think butterflies are absolutely gorgeous I creatures. do, I think, and I know Michelle's quite frightened of them. She is, isn't she, um, bless but her. I, I don't... I, I don't have a problem about moths or butterflies, but no. I don't like daddy long legs. I'm not a huge fan. Do you I'm know not... it's the way they mm. just go, Ooh, and I always feel that that's what they're saying. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I always found when I was young, they used to get caught in my hair. Oh my god! And then I'd, I think I'd, I was away from them and suddenly they would like crawl up. Don't like that. But butterflies, I think, are, are beautiful. And I think particularly... Um, I remember as a, they're just reminiscent of summertime and strawberries mm. in the garden, that kind of thing. Oh, See butterflies strawberries in flying the garden. around, yeah. Of course, yeah. the strawberries for later. <gasps> have you? Yeah, strawberries in the cafe we're going to have, and, and raspberries and blueberries. Oh, what more could you want? Mm. Oh, it feels like summer. I mean, it doesn't feel like summer outside, but that sounds like summer yeah. to me. Do we put cream on them or do we melt some chocolate and pour it over the top? Oh, my God. <laughs> can, can we have oh my goodness. Nicola, both? I didn't even finish to say the word chocolate before Nicola said melt chocolate. Can I? Yes, Nicola, can I just throw that out there? I think melt chocolate first yeah. and then pour your cream over the top. Mm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I love the fact we start off with a beautiful, healthy dessert. You've got your fruit on there. Yeah. Oh, lovely, healthy, wholesome. <laughs> let's get some chocolate on it and then let's put some cream on. <laughs> oh, why not? It's a Brilliant. Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, it's a celebration. You know, if you, if you can't Absolutely. celebrate and treat yourself on a, on a day like today, exactly. a momentous day like today, when can you, quite Absolutely. frankly? And I have to say adding chocolate to anything improves it mm -hmm. and that is um, scientifically proven i completely agree with you i am um, i like the effect of um these kind of chalky inks mm. um because you get that that sort of very ethereal kind of look to them don't you because they are so opaque absolutely it gives you i think when you've laid them down um or when you're doing your sort of your ombre effects and you've laid them down all over your cardstock, it has almost like a printed effect mm. because it's so chalky. Yeah. I think it's just nice to have that different effect, that effect that we're not used to with our other ink pads. And they do still paint absolutely beautifully. Because I did wonder, with them being that chalky finish, mm. I thought, hmm, how are they going to sort of handle our watercolour techniques? But as you can see here, they paint Perfect. absolutely beautifully. Lots of people loving the techniques that you've shown us today. Susan says these have been some great demonstrations of techniques. I've, re I've learned a lot today. Um, I think um, Linda says a good day from um, New Mexico. I'm super excited about the new ink pads. Have a great day and thanks for teaching us. Um, I think people are learning a lot about different ways of using these ink pads um, uh, today. Yeah. And different techniques generally, you know, that you can apply with 
um, the person you perhaps already have, but being able to show us um, how different they look um, today, you know, I think everyone is learning a lot. Brilliant, and that's the main thing. That's you know that makes me so so pleased to hear that because I have had so much fun. Like I've said, I feel like I've said it a thousand times on this show, but I have genuinely had so much fun playing with these ink pads. And I sort of challenged myself when I was prepping all my demos. My challenge myself was sort of how many different techniques can you come up with? How many different ways can we show the guys at home that you can work with these ink pads? I didn't want to be uh, repeating the same technique over and over again. We've had a question from you. Angela, and she Ooh. says, "Will Hilly, Hilly, Hilly? I've got a new name. <sighs> Hilly, hello. Uh, do you know? I put my glasses on it. It didn't help at all oh, earlier dear. on. Uh, will Lily heat emboss for us, please? Can you heat emboss with these ink? Pads? You can heat emboss with them, but you do have to be quick. So what right. I'd say is." stamp and then very very quickly get your heat embossing powder onto them and then you can heat emboss but okay. you can it is possible and uh, we've just not done it in this show quite frankly there's so many techniques yeah. more techniques i'd love to show you but it is absolutely possible just be a little bit quicker than you would for perhaps a pigment ink pad okay. so I wouldn't, I wouldn't stamp and leave it and go and make yourself a cup of tea and have a biscuit i'd say stamp get that embossing powder straight on right okay brilliant thank you for that no problem at all any questions i mean we've got just under 10 minutes left, but any questions you do have, do get them in in this last 10 minutes. And I'll do my best to answer them, but of course, make sure you tune in um, 2 p.m. on Tuesday. It's gonna be an absolutely fabulous launch with Leanne. Of course, she's gonna have so many tips and techniques and tricks uh, with these ink pads. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. So let's go in with our sunrise glow. You can see we're just using all of our different colors of ink pads to create a really gorgeous um, tsunami of butterflies, kaleidoscope of butterflies onto here. It's almost like a tsunami of colour, isn't it? That's it what I was is, sort of absolutely thinking. it is. Absolutely gorgeous. You can be using every single colour of your ink pads onto your butterflies to give you this fabulous, really uplifting, cheerful finish to your heart to your cards so much fun to build up but it's quite quick as well when you're watercoloring using uh, your ink pads it's quite quick to get that sort of instant wow onto your coloring look how fabulous that looks we're just going to speed that up ever so slightly because quite frankly i don't know where this show's gone it's nearly five to already so let's bring in one that we've already done oh we've just sort of need to do the vote aren't we blooming heck oh, that's Isn't lovely that you know what I'd, I'd have that just as it is. Nothing else is almost like wrapping paper yeah. or um, a cover for a book. You know, it's almost like kind of, um, oh, what's the, a lepidopterist? Le lepidopterist, yeah, yeah, that I collects know what butterflies. It's those kind of sort of historical Victorian kind of pictures you'd have with all those butterflies on it. Oh, that looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Do you know what I'm thinking now? It'd be quite nice. Get a really deep little square box frame, mm. wooden wooden frame to it. How fabulous would that look in the back, just yeah. like that? Again, little black mat and layer, of course. I mean, I couldn't couldn't do the last demo without my black card stock. No. And then we're going to pop that onto a little square card. Just a cute, dinky little card, this one. Uh, it can be large cards, it can be small cards, whatever your sort of preference when it comes to your crafting, when it comes to your card shapes and styles, this is going to work for you. Even if you want to go for your concept cards, your box making, your gift bags, your scrapbooking, of course, this will work. How fabulous does that look? But just to finish it off, let's bring in uh, one of these stamp sentiments included in the collection as well so not only are you getting your inks you're getting your stamps which are your background your focal points your embellishments your sentiments absolutely fabulous and then let's just add some foam onto the back of there just for that extra little bit of lift onto our sentiment and then let's pop that onto there and then we'll finish that off do we go on the top or on the bottom let's go for bottom nicholas says bottom if nicholas says bottom she is the producer you, and that is that you can't do what she says not to or the other way around can't not do what she says can't not 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 I'm doing as she says, yeah, basically. Yeah, that's, that's it. There yeah. we go. We don't want to get in trouble. our finished card. How easy. Let's Beautiful. move that monkey cup out of the way. How easy was that? <laughs> Super simple card design, but can you watercolour with these? absolutely you can ah, well, that, that's beautiful love that um i think i might have to have that stamp the, the stamps that we've got in this collection are mm. gorgeous aren't they absolutely. there's so many they different options stunning. i had a quick flick through those earlier on they're really really nice i'm definitely going to be one that i would say set my alarm but I, actually i'm going to be on sewing street on tuesday <gasps> i might have to do it in between shows and order those um we're going to get the votes for demo of the show um 
going to be tricky, I think. Mm. Going to be tricky. I don't know what one I would choose out of all of those. Um, so, um, what, what, how many did you do all together, Lee? Five. Five. Wow. This is good for me. You know, yeah. I'm usually like four demos, five demos, five demos. Five wow. demos. Impressive. First one, again, it feels like ages ago. <laughs> but that very simple technique of using that ombre background with a little bit of splatching, a tiny bit of watercolour on there too. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, love that technique, oh, yes. spritzing through your stencil, using some of our toppers from that uh, farmhouse collection. Number three, we stamped and then we spritzed onto that. And then we yeah. did our mop-up background as well. Number four is our magical fairies bringing in some of those lovely clear sparkle pens as well. Very atmospheric, that one I'd say. Lovely. And then finally, that cute diddy little one, diddy little card that we've just done. That's number five. So what's it going to be? One, two, three, four, five. Not got long, get those ones No, in. not got long at all. They are all lovely. Um, Hayley says, another gorgeous card. I love all these butterflies. And Lois says, beautiful card. Thank you, Lily. Um, really, really lovely. Shall I show the ink pads again? Yeah, yeah, let's do and it. And show you what they look like. Um, so these are not going to launch until Tuesday. Um, they are all they, these sort of um, teardrop shaped, um, like the shimmer imp pads we had before. Um, so they make them sort of more ergonomically correct for you to use. This first one is Awakening Forest. Then we have this one, which is <laughs> this Wave. And then we've got... So, so, so is wake, sorry. Then we have midnight mist. The next one is a soft heather. We've got sunrise glow. We have waterfall. We've got sweet clementine. Makes me want to sing. Da, da, da. I tell you, sweet uh, waterfall makes me want to sing. Don't, Don't go, go chasing waterfalls. waterfalls. Um, have you watched, oh, you don't watch films. Meet the Millers. There's quite a funny wow. part in that. Rosie Apple with them singing that. You don't watch films, do you? No. I've seen, <laughs> yes, Nicola, I have seen Shrek. I've seen Shrek multiple times, but apart from that, I pretty much haven't seen anything. <laughs> Have I seen, actually, George, I've seen all the Shreks multiple times. If you think I've only seen Shrek 1, you've got me all wrong, mate. I've seen them all. Seen Which all the is your favourite? Uh, original. Original, original and the best. Really? Original yeah, and the best. Absolutely. This next one is um, Vintage Merlot. Ooh, darling. Then we have Lemon Meringue. Oh yes. Yummy. Oh, Spring Buds. And then finally, we have one that I've nearly dropped on the floor, Raspberry Ripple, mm, which we think cream. is all delicious. So these are really beautiful sets of um, colours. And I think you've used pretty much every single colour on, on no, throughout mm -hmm. the demos, haven't you? I, have, I actually made sure when I was pressing last night, <laughs> I used every single colour. So you know what I'm like? Of course, I, I want to go to be pinks and purples. But you yeah. know what? I've really enjoyed using that full spectrum of colour. You get everything included, which is amazing. You guys, make sure you're setting those alarms because, quite frankly, you don't don't want to miss out on this you need to add these to your crafty stash tuesday be there or be square is all i can say they are amazing i've had so much fun playing with them i can't wait to continue playing with them when i get home tonight because they are amazing yeah they're possibly little things that are just going to go over this side of the counter where oh. my bag is where those pens have gone yeah there's no she does tracy says to me after every show stop buying things don't need it but you do, you, you do, do need it. And I think all those techniques have really sort of inspired me to have a go at making my mm. backgrounds and things yeah. like that. So, and yeah. it's so much it's fun good. just to sit down on an evening, just have a background creating yeah. session. You don't even have to make them into cards, just make all your backgrounds. Then maybe the next day you're going to go into your craft room and make them into finished cards. Just having a play, it's what it's all about. It's what crafting is all about. At the end of the day, it should be fun. And I've certainly had fun playing with these ink pads. And I think lots of the techniques, perhaps we, we, fall, we stumble mm -hmm. across, you know, you yeah. sort of play around with things and think, oh, you know, I made a bit of a mess here. But actually, you know, when, like when we've made a mess on your, your, your mat yeah. and then you put your paper on top of it, you can come up with the most beautiful backgrounds. So Absolutely. sometimes it can be a happy mistake if something's not quite working right. Um, I'm just looking at the winner, demo of the show. Mm -hmm. Right, what do we think it's going to be? Do you know what? I can't call it for this one. No? I'm not sure at all. Uh, oh, George thinks five. But, okay, actually, it's number three. Trying to remember. Oh, it's the mandala, isn't it? Ah, Interesting. Lots I have of, to say, I like I, that one. I think because having all those different, you know, sort of techniques you've mm. got in there looks really atmospheric, and it I does, like the colours as well. Yeah, Very I have to nice. say, I don't, don't usually go for green, but loving the green on here. 
Well Ooh. done. Well done. Looks absolutely beautiful. Right, we're almost done actually. Um, so we've got um, Crawford later on tonight. Ooh, we've got yeah. some loads of really good deals. Some of the deals I we had a sneaky peek because I brought them over a little bit too early. But we've got lots of bits and pieces to show you. Do you remember these um, ink pads are going to be available on Tuesday? Also remember it's double points on everything that you buy between now and midnight on Monday. And if you use the code Crown20, that will give you 20% off selected items on the website. Site. So have a nice couple of you know, couple of hours break. We're going to have jam tarts and cups of tea on the sofa, and we will see you back in two hours' time.